If you are not a sock knitter yet, I am going to make you one. Hello, my name is Emily Crow from Crochet Creations and welcome to my YouTube channel. I like to talk about all things fiber related. I do a podcast talking about the things I make and I like to do other vlogs on my making and product reviews and different roundups and things like that. That is what we're doing today. We are doing a pattern roundup of some beginner friendly sock knitting patterns. I'll set the stage a little bit. I've got my cozy candle going on and I've got my water and my toddler is napping. Yay! So I get to sit down and just kind of chat with you about a whole bunch of different patterns I've looked up and that I think would be a really great fit for someone who is just starting socks. I first began knitting socks a little over a year ago I think in like May or June of 2021 was when I finally bit the bullet, learned how to knit so I could knit socks. That was why I wanted to learn how to knit. And man, it's been such a journey. I'll make sure to link up above and down below a couple videos on my journey of knitting socks, all the socks I knit in one year, a Q&A about sock knitting, all sorts of things, because I really do love socks. I knit other things too, but socks are really what I spend a lot of my time doing. And so in my sock obsession, I have a couple friends of mine that are more beginner knitters than I am, and they have not knit socks. I need to make them sock knitters. And so I am putting together this list really for them, but for you as well, I thought it'd be great to share with you too of a whole bunch of different patterns that I feel like are a really great fit for someone who is new to sock knitting. Whether you have some more techniques under your belt for making other projects, or whether you really are a beginner knitter and have only made one or two things, I think that anyone can knit socks and there are all sorts of beginner friendly sock patterns that introduce you to techniques or even just use techniques you're already comfortable with in order to make socks. I don't think that being a beginner knitter should stop you from knitting socks. Socks were literally my third project. I knit a headband, like a little headband scarf thing was my first project. My second project was a yarn cozy, so basically like a little hat for my cake of yarn. And then I knit a pair of socks. And I've learned so much more since then about knitting socks, but that first pair of socks is still totally wearable and I do really enjoy them and I'm so proud of how far I've come. So I feel like you can learn how to knit socks too and it doesn't have to be as intimidating or scary. Knitting socks is not reserved for people who've been knitting for 40 years or people who are super comfortable with all sorts of crazy techniques. I think that anyone really can knit socks if you want to learn how to do that. It's very approachable, even for a beginner knitter. So all that rambling to say, I've put together this list of more than 25 patterns I think are really good fit for a beginner sock knitter as your first or second pair of socks so that you can really start delving into the world of sock knitting and start to get comfortable enough to branch out and apply even more techniques into your sock knitting. So let's get right into it. Okay, so I have both fingering weight patterns as well as DK or worsted weight patterns on this list. Mostly I've got fingering weight patterns, but I do have some DK weight patterns. And the thing about DK weight socks is they work up really fast. And so they're a really great way to dip your toes in the water, to finish a project really quickly, to practice a technique, but not spend forever knitting on a leg of a sock before you move on to a different part of the sock. And so those are really nice. So I do have some thicker socks here. I'm going to start with the patterns and socks I would recommend first for like the very first time knitters. If you are intimidated by the concept of knitting socks, a basic sock pattern is usually called a vanilla sock. Plain and simple vanilla sock. And all sorts of people have different variations on what they do for a vanilla sock. And I have my recipe. I'll put it down below so you can check it out. But my personal recipe and a very common vanilla sock is going cuff down. So starting at the cuff of the sock, working down the leg, working the heel and then doing the foot and then the toe of the sock. And because of the heel construction I use, there's a little bit of short row shaping and working only part of your stitches to work the heel flap, picking up stitches in order to create the gusset. So there's a couple techniques there that might be really scary for someone who's a new knitter. And it might just be too much <laughs> to do a basic vanilla sock 
in that style. And so you might want to do something that is really simple that doesn't even have a heel. And so I've got a couple patterns for you if you just want to really brush the surface of knitting socks. The Magic Heel Socks by The Autumn Acorn are a pattern that I've knit. I've knit for my daughter. I adjusted the stitch counts to fit a smaller size and I did that to review some yarns from Michaels that could be used for socks. So I'll link that video up above. That's a really fun vlog. But for this pattern is a paid for pattern. Right now it is listed for $4 and basically you just have a special ribbed texture along the back side of the sock for a large heel portion that allows the sock to stretch over your heel. If you've ever heard of a tube sock, a literal tube sock means that there's no extra shaping to create like a heel pocket. And so it's literally just like a tube. And so that ribbing within that tube helps that sock to stretch more over the heel, which is the widest part of the foot moving diagonally from the instep to the heel. And then also because of the shape of the heel differs so much from the rest of the foot and leg. So that really helps. And these socks were great for adults. They work great for kids. If you can move the math down a little bit, it's really easy to change. So if you need help, let me know. I can definitely help you size a pattern to make it fit smaller or larger than what the pattern is written for. But this pattern is a really great pattern for gift knitting. If you're not sure how the sock is gonna fit on a different person, but you have a general idea of what kind of size might fit them, then this sock is a great pattern. It is worked in the round, and so you do need to know how to do that. All these patterns are worked in the round that I've selected, but you just go round and round and round. You don't have to do any short row shaping. You don't have to do any stopping and purling back or whatnot. So. This is a really, really good pattern for someone who is a beginner. It is a fingering weight pattern. I do have a couple other tube sock patterns that I wanna share. This one is called Simply Irresistible Socks Fingering by Christy Archer, and it is a similar idea. There's a type of rib texture that goes along the bottom of the sock that'll go over the heel that allows the sock to stretch comfortably over the heel. It is a little bit different of a fit. I think it might even have Pearl bumps, yeah, it's got reverse sock net texture on the front of the sock, so a little bit different than the previous pattern. And so if you're looking for like uh, different textures, but easy textures, you know, you're just purling on the front of the sock, it looks like, then that is a really good choice. And Christy Archer also has a worsted weight version of the Simply Irresistible Socks. So this pattern, it looks like it's exactly the same visually as the fingering weight version of the pattern, but because it is a worsted weight pattern, this would work up so fast to be able to knit nine stitches per two inches. So that's 18 stitches in a four inch gauge. So that is not very many at all. So that will work up so, so fast. So if you want a really quick tube sock project, this would be a great one to do. So those are like, if you are not feeling comfortable doing short rows, the heel shaping, it's a little hard from reading a pattern sometimes to visualize how that'll happen. And so I can understand it being a little intimidating. And so tube socks are a great way to feel comfortable and realize, oh, a sock is not as complicated as it seems. Like I can do this. But all the rest of these patterns are patterns that use a traditional either heel flap and gusset or short row heel, those kind of techniques that are kind of like the next level up. My first sock pattern that I ever made did include a heel flap and gusset. It's totally fine. I was able to do it. It was magical seeing a heel come together for the first time. I highly recommend it. It's a super cool to see how that shaping happens. And so a pattern that has a heel flap and gusset construction or a short row heel, that's not unattainable for a beginner knitter or a first time sock knitter to do. So we're gonna go into all sorts of really cool patterns that I definitely recommend for someone who is new at knitting socks. Okay, so I already mentioned that DK or worsted weight socks work up super fast, so they're really good for someone who's a beginner. The DK weight vanilla socks pattern by the Crazy Sock Lady, this is a free pattern, and so I definitely recommend, even if you're not ready to knit socks right now, add it to your Ravelry library if you have that, and download it so that you can have it on hand. And she's got three sizes with the sock, and you can knit this pattern up super, super fast. 
it's just a basic vanilla sock pattern and it's her recipe and so in my experience knitting the sock there's not a lot of extra floof in it so it makes it really simple if it's your first time knitting a DK weight sock or it's your first time knitting or if it's a, your or if it's your first time knitting socks at all this can be a really great option I also found a simple DK shorty sock pattern by Woolfield or Nicole Bracy. This is, again, it would be a super, super quick pattern. It looks like it's got a heel flap and gusset, so very similar design. Again, these vanilla socks are really, really similar. And this is a shorty sock, so again, it will work up super fast. If you have never knit socks before, a shorty sock is one whose cuff is at the ankle, and so it is a short sock or an ankle sock and those work up really fast and so if you are not quite sure how you would want to do an ankle sock like how many rounds you'd want to do on the cuff or the leg or you know those kind of questions if you're not sure this is a great option for you so that you can get this free pattern for shorty socks in a DK weight and follow along and kind of just get a feel for what that would be like some other really basic beginner fingering weight patterns that are a variation of a vanilla sock that I want to share with you. First and foremost, Sarah Opie created an ebook of seven days of plain socks. So she did seven variations on vanilla socks using different heels, toe up, cuff down, different toes, different ribbing, all sorts of different like little techniques and changes to make seven unique vanilla socks. So if you just don't really know what techniques you'll enjoy the most if you're not quite sure what heel you'd like but you want to branch out and experiment a little with your knitting I think this is a great option you can buy all the patterns separately but there's an ebook that you can purchase right now it's listed for it says about $19 that's not very much to have seven patterns of socks so that you can explore and try out new heels and constructions and toes and all those things oh no Okay, I'm having technology issues, but I think we're okay now. <laughs> what I was saying is that I think that paying $19 US for seven sock patterns to be able to try out a variety of constructions and heels and toes and other techniques that are all part of a vanilla sock would be amazing. I think it's a great deal if you are curious and wanting to explore many different techniques to use in a vanilla sock to maybe figure out what kind of sock you would most enjoy making. The beginner sock pattern that I recommend the most as a cuff down vanilla sock that I have really enjoyed is the I'm So Basic Socks pattern by Summer Lee Knits. And she's got a lot of patterns on this list because she has a lot of beginner friendly sock knitting patterns. Those quintessential patterns that are just a great thing to add to your pattern library and to your repertoire of things that you make. The I'm So Basic Socks pattern is unique because it is a huge PDF. You can get it on our website too, so I'll make sure to link that down below. But it's a huge PDF that really walks you through how to knit a sock. It teaches you about measuring for gauge. It teaches you about measuring your foot to figure out how long to make your foot and when to do the heel and it tells you all the things it really walks you through every single step and thought process in order to make a sock that fits you well i think it can be hard if you just follow a pattern word for word and then if it doesn't turn out quite right because your gauge was off maybe your yarn choice was not the right yarn for that project or whatnot but this pattern pdf has so many resources to help you have a good first pair of socks. And so I think it's totally worth it and it's free. A great resource for beginner sock knitters. And so I very, very highly recommend it. Another pattern that is pretty similar but doesn't have quite as many resources that is also by Summerly Knits is the Weekend Shorty Socks. This pattern is really neat. It utilizes scraps really, really well to have some really fun pops of color and interestingly enough those different color changes showcase different parts of the sock in the geometry of the sock so that you can really see okay where is the cuff where is the leg where is the heel flap where is the heel turn where is the toe and where does my rate of decreases in the toe change and things like that so it's a really fun sock for using scraps and also for kind of 
being a study in the geometry of a sock. So that is a really fun, also free pattern by Summerly that I definitely recommend. And shorty socks always work up pretty quickly. There's a couple other patterns that I haven't personally made, but they are free and they are made by a well-known designer. And so I would trust that these are really good patterns that you could make. So there's the old reliable top-down socks by Tannis Lavelli. And she's also got a toe-up version, the trusty toe-up socks. And these are both free patterns and they're her vanilla sock. They're really great to just see how other makers make their sock. There's not one end all and be all of like the perfect vanilla sock. It's really just what you like to do. And so I definitely recommend trying a couple different vanilla sock recipes or patterns from different designers so you can get comfortable with what you like to make. This is Tannis Lavelli's two patterns. It looks like the cuff down is a heel flap and gusset construction while the trusty toe up socks look like they are an afterthought heel. That's kind of neat to be able to try something different. That's a different technique that it sounds scary, but I promise it's not if you take it one small step at a time of picking up your stitches, making sure you've got everything on your needle that you need to, making your little snip, and then attaching your yarn. It really is not as scary as it sounds. I promise, I promise, I promise. <laughs> to some DK weight sock patterns that I think are, I'm going to call this like my vanilla plus section. So now we're moving away from the things that are just plain vanilla socks, basic techniques, making a sock to function like a sock. And I'm moving more into using textures, using more artistic elements of the sock, more embellishments maybe is the right word but a lot of it is based on texture there's a little bit of color play I've got even like a very beginner lace pattern that I'm going to recommend but there's lots of different texture things that make it really fun to make a sock and so these would be really great for a second sock or if you are a very comfortable knitter and you've knit other projects and you want to take a dive into not just knitting a vanilla sock but you want your first sock to have a little bit more interest then these would also be really, really great because they are not difficult to do. Oh man, where to start? Let's start with the smallest. I love this pattern. We're just on a Summerlee kick. So this is the Tiny Tree Sock pattern by Summerlee. It is a free pattern. If you want to trial a technique or showcase a special yarn scrap that you have or just do something really cute, this is the perfect pattern for you. It is a fingering weight vanilla plus sock pattern. She's got little instructions on just a little bit of color work with like some freckle stitches, doing striping, doing color blocking. She's got it all in this pattern so that you can make itty bitty socks as tree ornaments to put on your tree. I made one of these socks and I love it. And I would love, love, love to use yarn scraps from previous socks to make little tree socks as like a little memento so that when my socks are worn to the ground and like not wearable anymore, I still have my little tree sock as like a little reminder. So I should get on that. Add that to my long list of things to make. But this is a great little pattern that has just like a couple extra little techniques. They work up so fast, like in one episode of a TV show, if you are paying attention to what you're knitting and they work up so fast and it's really fun to add just like a little bit of playing with color. So those are really fun socks. I'm gonna talk about some DK weight socks that have a great, really basic texture that I definitely recommend for a beginner sock knitter. Here is a free pattern that I am actually currently working on. It is called Laid Edges by Kelly McPherson. It is free, like I said, so nice. And this is DK weight sock pattern. What's really cool about this pattern is that it is mostly stockinette, cuff down sock, but there is like a slip stitch minor cable detail along both sides of the sock. It's not as hard as, as it sounds, I promise. You like basically have a slip stitch and you just rearrange a couple stitches. So you knit the slip stitch in a different position than you would normally knit it, like not just knitting up above, but you kind of, you just do a little stitch swap and then you have a cable, like it's super cool. And it's really easy. It's nothing crazy. It's not even written in like cable lingo. It's not bad, I promise. And so this pattern is really easy. Like I said, mostly stockinette, heel flap, gusset, cuff down. And that's really the majority of sock patterns I think are heel flap and gusset 
with cut down construction, but there are lots of other options out there. So definitely explore and let me know if you have any favorite patterns that are not that, you know, typical construction that we see because every sock is a good sock if it fits couple more summer Lee patterns because I can't get enough of her. She's got thick miss socks as well as thick giving socks, a little hard to say, and using yarn held together. So it creates a really great marling effect. It's a really great way to use up your finger weight yarns, maybe even do some stash busting. These are like a worsted or DK weight gauge. And these, I would classify them as vanilla plus because there's like a ribbed texture. There's also a vanilla sock that she has, but she's got like basic cabling. She's got some reverse stockinette. So there's a couple different textures that you can try to make some DK or worsted weight socks that work up so fast, be nice and cozy, use some good stash up. I really enjoy summer release patterns. If you haven't realized, I should make a little like maybe designer roundup of the sock designers that I really, really like. She would definitely be on that list. And I really like that her patterns are sized for small feet too. So I can make sure to match my daughter or make them as gifts for other people, family members, whatnot. So that makes it really nice. It's not just for adults. You can knit socks for kids and those work up super fast. So again, if you feel like you're going to lose steam on knitting socks, knit a pair of kid socks because they work up really fast. Knit a pair of DK weight kid socks, those would work up so fast. Okay, a couple more DK weight patterns. The biscuit socks, that's one that I really wanna make. It's got this just cute little itty bitty texture. It is a free pattern as well. So yes, I am definitely gonna make these. They look so cozy and simple. We love a free pattern that is well written and highly recommended. So I definitely need to try this pattern out, but it would be really good as a beginner sock pattern, especially if you are not intimidated by working around to knit a sock. There's just a very slight texture that would be really fun. If you want a texture that's a little bit more interesting, the blueberry waffle socks are a really great pattern that I have heard tons about. On Ravelry, there's over 8,000 products. A ton of people have made this pattern. I need to make more DK weight socks, I think. But it's got this really fun squishy texture. And so if you are not going to lose steam because like texture is overwhelming for you, this would be a great option to kind of like keep you going, keep you interested in the stitching that you are doing. The final free DK weight sock pattern. This is Rye by Tin Can Knits. And I really, really like Tin Can Knits too as a designer. They do a really good job at making size inclusive pieces that cover the whole family and the whole gamut of size ranges too. These socks have like a reverse stockinette or like a pearl side panel on the very top. So again, a little bit different than a plain vanilla sock, but nothing too strenuous. Just pay attention to where your stitches are so that you can pearl in the right spot and knit in the right spot. There's also a finger weight version of this pattern. It's called the Rye Light Pattern. So yeah, you can choose from worsted weight socks or fingering weight socks and have the same design elements in it. So if you like one, you could do the other with just a change in stitch count and yarn. It'd be super easy. They're both free. So that's really nice that you can like try out both weights, maybe see which weight you would like better, the, the fingering weight or the worsted weight. Another free pattern that I have on my list is Hermione's Everyday Socks. Wow, this is an old pattern, July, 2009. How many years ago was that? 13 years ago. That's a long time ago. It only comes in one size, but it is a free pattern. I can't like hold it against them too much. I'm sure lots of people have changed the numbers. And like I said, if you need help changing your numbers, just send me a DM on Instagram and I can totally help you out. My Instagram is crochet creations. I don't mind doing math for knitting and crochet. so. Definitely reach out if you need help or if you have questions about modifying something, let me know. There are over 37,000 projects in Ravelry of the Hermione's Everyday Socks. So lots of people have made them. I'm sure you could get help from any local yarn store to make these socks. This is just a fun little texture that it's just one of those quintessential patterns that almost everyone I feel like has knit if I talk to them or want to knit. So I just need to knit it. Another textured sock that I really want to make, see, because I tried to include all the patterns 
that I have made and find really, really good for a beginner, but also patterns I hope to make that I still think would be really great for a beginner. So these are the Cine Socks by Rachel Raimo from Maven Crafted. And this pattern corresponds with her other Cine patterns. They all use this like pearl bump garter ridge almost type of detail striping throughout to give it some really good texture and like I said it's just pearls and knits and so it's a really simple texture really good to do if you need something just a little bit more than a vanilla sock. Another pattern that is free that I've heard so much about the Rose City Rollers this oh man 15,000 projects on a wrap work. That's a lot. The one thing I personally, I'm not sure if I'd like about this, it's got a rolled cuff. It's probably just a stockinette leg. Like you don't even do ribbing at the top and that would create that rolling of the fabric, I think. But I haven't made these, so I don't know for sure, but they are a shorty sock. If you like that rolled detail, then this would be a really fun sock to do. Again, free pattern. So always really nice to try a free pattern when you are learning a new technique. As long as it's a well-written pattern, there are some free patterns that are not worth trying to decipher if they don't make sense or if they're written poorly, but I'm trying to give you only patterns that I trust and that I think would be really great for a beginner. We are back to Summer Lee. I do enjoy her patterns. And one of her patterns that I love, love, love is the daily socks. And this is a perfect vanilla plus pattern. It's got a little bit of texture, so it works great with any kind of variegated yarn, speckled yarn, tonal. It would be great. I really enjoyed it when I knit a pair of these socks. The only thing is I knit my leg a little shorter than I intended because the gauge is different when you do this texture. There's some slip stitches involved. So this is a really fun texture to do. I really liked it. <laughs> so I need to make another pair of this pattern. And so I think you should make a pair of this pattern if you want something a little bit different than just knitting and knitting in the round forever and ever and ever. Summerly also has a couple shorty sock set patterns. And I specifically picked the shorty sock set, which is like her first volume, because it's got cute pom-poms and ruffles, a couple fun little textural things with ribbing and such. Her volume two, it looks like has brioche, which is a little bit more intimidating for a beginner. So that's why I picked volume one version, but it has three different patterns within it that you can choose from to do a shorty sock that's vanilla, but then has a little bit something extra. So totally attainable. Summer Lee, I feel like is a really good designer. She's been doing this a while. And so I never feel like her patterns are confusing for me. And granted, everyone's brain works a little bit different, right? So I definitely recommend you at least try her patterns out and take a look and see what you'd wanna do. She does do a lot of color work patterns. So if that's something you'd wanna delve into, then I definitely recommend her. Another free pattern that I wanna mention it also is only written for a women's medium. Get someone to help you change the math a little bit because it wouldn't be hard to change the math for different sizes. I think she only offers the women's medium because she's making this a free pattern. But this is the Color Palette Socks by Laura Moritz. And this is a really fun way to use minis or scraps and you get to use a twisted rib technique so it's really fun changing of textures and I really enjoyed making this pattern. It was so fun just knitting a little bit and then realizing, oh, it's time to switch to another yarn. It was really fun to do as a beginner knitter. It was one of my first pairs of socks that I made. Definitely recommend it. Like I said, if you need help with the numbers, let me know and I can definitely help you. It'd be easy to switch it up. If you're not familiar with the sizing of sock patterns, they tend to follow like 64 stitches in the round is like a size medium usually and then it usually goes by multiples of eight based on gauge usually it's like an eight stitches per inch and so the pattern will be split up by like eight stitches so you'll have a 72 stitch count and a 64 and a 56 and etc cetera, etc cetera. so those will kind of be the sizes the numbers can differ for sure and your gauge can differ the designer's gauge can differ sometimes they're in between so they might be like a 60 stitch count size and that's totally fine if you're not familiar with those numbers and if you're not 
sure how to switch this pattern from a woman's medium, which is a 64 stitch count size, to a different size, you can easily get help. I would love to help you, so let me know. This actually is making me think, maybe I should make a pair of socks for my daughter. This would be so fun to like squish this pattern down into a toddler size. The DRK Everyday Socks by Andrea Mowry are another really quintessential sock pattern. It's got like a rib texture. It's a really fun way to use up your yarn. And she even does some like scrappy bits in it, which is super fun. And she is again, a really well-known designer that is really good at giving you the resources you need in order to do a really good job at the pattern. That you'll pick the right yarn and that you'll pick the right sizing and all of that stuff. I've not made these socks, but I've heard a lot about them. So if that's something you'd wanna do, these are toe up, I think. If that's something you'd wanna do, then I would definitely recommend giving it a go. And it looks like they also come in 11 sizes. Holy cannoli. Wow, baby, taller, child, small, medium, large. And then women, small, medium, large. And men, small, medium, large. Wow, literally everybody can get these socks. So. Even though the price is, it's $7 US for these socks for 11 sizes, I think this would be really good. If you like the look of these socks and you wanna knit socks for everybody, this would be a great vanilla plus pattern to get. And then, ooh, I love these socks. I should just buy the pattern because I am obsessed with this texture. This is like the very farthest from beginner that's on this list. These are the Dust Blend Socks by Stephen West. He just came out with this pattern. The texture is beautiful. It mirrors the texture on his Dust Blend shawl, which now I feel like I wanna make because I love this texture. I feel like I need to make this pattern and the shawl that matches. And that would, oh, matching yarn too for both projects, that'd be so nice. Anyway, this texture is beautiful. And so if you really don't think you can slog through a sock, I know sock knitting is not for everybody, and some people really don't enjoy knitting a pair of socks because it feels like they go on forever and you're doing the same thing and whatnot. I feel like this is a really good pattern to constantly keep your mind engaged and trying new textures and switching things around. They would be super fun to do if you are not afraid of trying different textures and things. And also the thing with texture is if you accidentally knit it wrong, it's not like gonna stand out. It's not like, like knitting a single pearl stitch where a knit stitch should be in a stockinette sock will show up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not intimidated by texture. I think texture is really fun and I want more texture in my life. So if you do too, I recommend this pattern. And especially if you like that shawl pattern of his, then this would be a great seamless transition to knitting socks using this pattern. And then last but not least, the last beginner friendly sock pattern that I have found is called Wish You Were Here by the Kitchen Sink Shop. And this pattern is free. It is a fingering weight pattern, cuff down. This is really fun because there's a little bit of a lace detail. It's mostly stockinette sock, but you get just a little bit of interest. Kind of reminds me of the Laid Edges DK weight socks that I mentioned that have like the slip stitch baby cable on them. This is like a baby lace. If you wanna do some lace, a little bit of yarn overs, this would be a really, really good pattern to kind of get you started on that without having the lace interact with the heel at all. So it's kind of like the front of the sock is like just a lace panel. The back of the sock is where you actually learn the heel shaping and techniques. So I think that this would be a good pattern for someone who really likes lace or who wants to do something a little different than stockinette. Wow, okay. We have looked through literally more than 25, almost 30 patterns that I think would be really good for beginner sock knitters. If you have knit socks before, let me know what patterns you would recommend for beginners who are either like new to knitting in general or who have never knit socks before. I'd love to hear your recommendations and to see what helped make it click for you. I would say that Summer Lee's I'm So Basic socks pattern is really what like got me comfortable knitting socks. My first pair of socks that I made were magical. It was amazing to see how they like became a sock, but I think that it just didn't work with my brain as well. That pattern that I had used, Summer Lee's pattern was definitely a better fit for how my brain works. And so if you have any other suggestions, you wanna leave them down below. I would love to hear. I'm sure other beginner sock knitters would love to hear too so they can do some more exploring and see what patterns they may want to try. I've got lots of free patterns listed here. So hopefully even if you're a little bit 
hesitant that you can at least snag something, download it onto your computer so you can take a good look and try it out and no harm no foul if you need to frog it a few times because it's a free pattern, something that can walk you through how to do a sock. I love knitting socks and I want everyone to knit socks. It feels like such an intimidating thing to knit socks, but I promise you it's not. And I really want to help you to feel comfortable to take that step if you haven't already, so that you can decide if that's something that you want to continue to make. I should get going, but I'm so glad to have you here. Join me on this little pattern roundup and let me know down below what else you'd like to see from me. I do think it'd be fun to do some designer roundups of designers that I really like. Maybe doing like a size inclusive designer roundup of designers who only have size inclusive patterns up through like a 60 inch bust size. So I think that that would be really beneficial. And let me know if you want to see anything else from me because I do really enjoy doing these pattern roundup videos. And it also shows me some things that are really interesting to me that I want to try. There's definitely a lot of things on this list, even though I've knit dozens of socks already in my life. I want to knit more of these beginner socks because there's just something about doing a basic sock that is just a comfort knit and it's so small you can take it with you if you're somewhere that kind of gives you a little bit of anxiety maybe you're waiting at a doctor's office or waiting in line and so you're like getting impatient or anytime you're stressed anxious waiting bored Socks are a great project to have on hand. And so I hope that you will join the sock knitters and at least give it a really good try and that these patterns will help you do so. Until next time, happy making. Bye.